Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. I would like to thank you all for, for coming, and I admire and commend the courage of uh, Kulmin's mom and sisters. I'm sorry. It's their strength and faith that keeps them going, you know, and I admire that. I'm happy also for the various organizations that have come out to show their support, but I'm disappointed because this is not an issue that should just concern Muslims, blacks, Africans, or people who have, uh, you know, mental illness. This should concern every single Canadian. The allegations made here, which are based in some fact, should disturb every single Canadian. And I'm disappointed in the fact that this is not an issue that's been taken up. No human being and no animal should be treated the way that Komi is alleged to have been treated, according to the sisters' statements, according to documents that will come out in, in, in the inquest if, if, if such a thing comes into, into being, which will take place. But I think we need to question our government as to why this kind of treatment takes place for individuals. Even a convicted criminal should not be kept in a cage like that, as was described by, by the sister. And I think we need to seek answers. And our organization is here to stand behind the family's quest for accountability, transparency, and the pursuit of justice. And I think we all need to, to get involved to, to make our society a better place. A society is only as good as how it treats the most vulnerable. And somebody who is sick, like Komiya was, is the most vulnerable. And if we can't take care of the most vulnerable, that's how we are judged. And I think it's a duty upon all of us Canadians to stand firm and ask for answers. For our organization, this also fits. If the allegations and, and, and these things come out in an inquest or, or, or a trial, it unfortunately fits into a pattern that we're seeing of Islamophobia, which is growing. We've seen all of the, uh, the, the, the news stories. Recently, uh, the, 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 the person who st stuck overseas because the government would not defend her. I'm sure you're reading about her in the papers. We have Abu Sufyan Abdul Razik. We have uh, Bashir Maktal. All happen to be black, but also Muslims, but also non-black Muslims. There is a pattern an uncomfortable pattern that we see of certain people being treated differently. And in this case, some of the allegations that the sisters have brought to our attention and to the attention of CareCan concern us deeply because we cannot have a Canada that does this kind of behavior to citizens based on race, religion, color, etc. So I think, and, and this is not, these allegations are not being made lightly. We see the evidence. We as an organization at the CMCLA and CareCan we get numerous instances of stories that don't make the press where these kind of allegations are made. That's why when this was brought to our attention, we immediately tried to get ourselves involved because it fits into a pattern. And I think we need to bring an end to that to make Canada the place that we all want it to be. So thank you very much for coming. And I hope this will make a difference, that his death was not in vain. And that he is, inshallah, we Muslims believe, that somebody who dies in these circumstances is in a better place. And may he, may we all have the opportunity to join him there, inshallah. Amen. But let's learn from his death and let's make sure this does not happen to another Canadian, inshallah. Thank you very much.